guys, it's Tilly and today I am here with my Empire of Storms book review by Sarah J Maas. In all honesty, I have filmed this video three times and every time I finish it I go and sit down and start editing it and think damn, there's something else I should have said about that book or there was other parts I need to add and so I just scrapped it. But this will be my final video. I will upload this one no matter what and so let's get straight into it. I will do this review in two parts. The first one will be spoiler free and the second half will be full of spoilers because I am absolutely brimming to talk about this book and everything that happened in it. So I'm going to get started straight away and just jump into the spoiler free part. So this is the fifth book in the Throne of Glass series basically. We pick up after um, Aileen has saved Dorian from getting his collar broken off. Manon is back with her clan, kind of like an outcast amongst everyone because everyone's very suspicious of her group and so it's all kind of really on edge. It was actually quite a happy ending so we kind of had to expect a bunch of stuff to go down in this book. And it does. So for those of you who haven't read it yet, you should jump straight on that. It is a huge book. I think it's like 687 pages. That's just in the hardcover. The paperback is still 687 pages, but you know, it's still huge. And so much happens, and I really don't want to say it to you guys, but as this is spoiler free, it's a good zone. But I have seen so many spoilers out there since the book has been released. You guys should read it as quickly as possible so that you guys don't get spoiled. I gave this book five stars because it's a Throne of Glass book and I absolutely love Throne of Glass. But the more that I think about this book, it is definitely my least favourite out of the entire Throne of Glass series. It's one of those ones that you're reading it and everything is so great and you're so invested in the story. But once you put it down, you see all the problems and potholes and things that you kind of second guess, especially when you talk to other people and they'll point something out you kind of notice it and so that's what happened to me once I finished this book um, but I can say that the characters are still amazing I love them and um, there's not as much depth to some of them as I found in the last books but you know they're already a cinnamon roll so you can't really get angry about that. As for the storyline it progresses pretty quickly I found that um, a lot of it was like a buffer material just so that she could fill the book up so that you can get to the ending I mean the ending was like the most important part of this entire book it's absolutely crazy and amazing and I could not predict half of what happens so you guys have that to look forward to. It is pretty it is pretty hard jamming between all the different characters that um, have point of views in this book but it's still like really good. It super annoyed me because I hate having so many multiple perspectives because I just wanted to read a certain characters more than someone else's but in this case by the time that I finished a chapter I was already in love with that character so she wrote it really well. This book will leave you wanting more the moment you're finished like I still can't believe the ending it was phenomenal. So if you guys haven't read it you need to read it really soon um there's amazing parts throughout it and some that I thought were really lacking but it was still a throne of glass book and if you guys enjoy it you need to read it. Are you guys ready now because I'm coming with the spoiler part? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay if you guys haven't read the book get away watch one of my other videos leave because this is your last warning. Major spoilers ahead! I can't believe Maeve the basic like biggest ass make a freaking bee is in town and she did that to Aileen. I cannot believe that she whipped her. Honestly, I just, <sighs> I am so hurt by that. Like I can just picture Aileen and everything that's happened to her and the fact that Maeve would do that to our queen. It is not fair. I am so emotional from that. That ending, like that's the only reason I gave the book five stars because <sighs> it was so hectic and like horrible, but good and I have so many emotions still like I finished this book like two days after it came out and I'm still so torn over that ending I'm happy about it I am so broken by it and I just don't know what to do like Sandra is now like pretending to be Aileen and like Rowan's gonna be this little angry muffin and Adion and Lysandra and I just I just I can't I can't do this so uh like I said there were things I liked about this book and things that I did not like now for things that I liked um I like that Adion is canonly bisexual, like, yes, it's happening. Um, Sarah J. Maas just needs to write more diverse characters into her books because we just need them. We need more of them. As for Manon, she is still totally and completely badass. The one thing that I did not like about her in this book was when she got her little bouncy wow wow moment on with Dorian because. I'm not a complete shipper of them two, like I just don't see 
any actual connection between them. Like, I can understand it from Dorian's side that he wants a woman who is indestructible, but to me, like, I just don't see them working because, like, the complete opposites. And I know that opposites attract and stuff, but I just, I don't see it, okay? Like, can we just not have a couple together? Like, come on. And let me tell you who is extremely badass, like, on Manon's level, and that is Elite. Like, first half of the book Elite is my actual favourite character in the entire world. And she was amazing and strong and badass, and she did not let anything stand in her way. Not the fact that she has, like, this foot that she can't even walk on, or the fact that she's been chained up and treated like crap for all of her life. She will still walk around the world with her head held high, telling a Faye Warrior, what the hell ever is on her mind. Now you may have noticed that I did say first half the book of lead, because second half the book of lead, who is sort of in love with Lorcan, who like, this stranger she barely knows, who's actually kind of an asshole, she still sacrifices her entire life for, and I was like, Come on, come on, Elite, you know better than that. Boys ain't worth your time. Don't you worry, honey. But she still did, and like, I am not fully on board with Lorcan. I'm not fully on board with Lorcan and Elite. Like, I am totally dependent on the last book in this series on whether I actually like them as a couple, because to me, Lorcan is not some cute little baby that needs to be looked after who's had a hard, rough life, okay? He's this character who is just an asshole. A complete asshole. And what I got from this story is that he is just jealous of what Aileen and Rowan has, that he doesn't even really care for a lead. It's more of the idea of a lead that he likes, the idea of having this girl that can just be the center of his world. Like, that's what I read it like. So I don't like Lorcan, and I know I'm on the small majority here that doesn't ship them. As for Rowan and Aileen, this book was pretty, like, boring when it came to them. Like, they got their little, like, bam chicka wow wow moments on and it was absolutely ridiculous. Can I just say, velvet wrapped steel. <sighs> that is like a joke on its own. Just that one sentence. Like, what the hell? Their parts to me were just so flat. Like, all they wanted to do was, like, get it on, think about biting each other, lustful looks and all that kind of stuff. Except for the ending, obviously, because Aileen in that ending was just <laughs> queen. Queen. Them two just didn't bother me much in the story. I am still completely in love with Lysandra. She is still amazing. All of her shifting forms, she's just perfect. One thing that I really, really did not like about this book was the romance of it all. Like, I understand that a lot of people like romance in books, but for me, to have every single character paired up with some sort of fey warrior by the end of it, I was just like, get over it. I, I don't want romance like for every single chapter. I would just appreciate the storyline getting involved instead of just two characters doing the do. Oh my god, I totally forgot my absolute favourite character ever who's Asterin. I love her. I need more of her. She is so perfect. Like, when she was going to die, I was... I think that's the only time I cried in the book, was when I thought she was going to die. I was fully prepared to hate Manon if she let Asterin die, and I'm so glad that she didn't, but like... Oh, my heart stopped. It actually stopped. Looking back, like, on the storyline as well, like, I can't think of everything that actually happened because I found that a lot of the stuff that went down was, like, a buffer just to get towards the end. And I know that the ending was amazing and everything, but, like, they did a lot of pointless stuff on the way and I can't even remember it. All I can think about is the ending. That's, like, it. I don't remember any else parts of the story. It's just that ending. I also felt like Sarah J Maas just no longer cares about the original trio, you know, like when it was Selena and Kale and Dorian, and now it's kind of like she's just rewritten the story to kind of get those characters out. Like, I don't think that Dorian really had as much time in the book as he usually did. Like, I can't think of a conversation that him and Aileen even had. Like, they are no longer, like, this dream friendship that was in the start of the series, and not to mention that Kale wasn't even in the book. Like, I didn't even care about Kale, but he barely even got mentioned which I thought was a little rough. Still gonna read the series, I still enjoy the book, but, you know, what's he up to? You know, how's he doing? You know, he almost died and everything for his friends, but whatever. But the writing was super good. Like, I did enjoy that. It was really quick, despite the fact that it's a huge book. I think that with every Sarah J Maas book she writes, she's just getting better and better, but my heart still belongs to A Court of Mist and Fury. Anyway, so that pretty much sums up all my feelings for the book. I'm fairly certain that there will be more things that I have to point out, but 
this is my final review as I said at the start it is prone to being edited I will maybe do a written one eventually so that I can actually edit that so don't hold me accountable for this review for the rest of my life but you know happy to discuss it happy to talk about the things that we might have conflicting issues on but I'm totally down for talking about Empire Storms or any Throne of Glass book for that matter or just Sarah J Maas thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed the book as much as I did and I hope that you guys don't get too angry about things that I didn't like about the book because as you might have noticed, there was quite a lot. I shall be back again soon. Um, I will be doing a recaptions video on the entire Throne of Glass series, so keep an eye out for those videos. And until then, I hope you guys have a lovely bookish day and um, hopefully great things happen to you. It is a goodbye from me and the Fire Breathing Bitch Queen. So there you guys have where I have been, what I have been doing, and all the stuff that's been going on in my life for the last two months. But that is not important because I'm back.